First of all, I think it's important to come here, to have a look around, to see with your own eyes what's going on, to speak to some people, especially in Svechan, but also here to speak to those people who have been present when uh, the situation on Friday escalated, when obviously the police was deployed and was forced uh, to give protection to the elected mayor. But of course, the jure, somebody can be uh, elected, but de facto, if you have a turnout from 1% or even less, um, it is rather questionable whether you have the legitimate um, uh, de facto support by the people. So if a mayor is afraid of its own citizen, of his own citizen, I think this is really questionable whether this operation will be successful. So how are you going to proceed? My question is what will happen tomorrow? What will happen next week? So what is the perspective of a municipal building which needs to be protected by heavy arms vehicles, by 70, uh, by 24-7 uh, protection, by policemen? I mean, what is this kind of state of if you have resources used into this instead of mediation, talking to citizens, talking to people, thinking about how to build trust to your own, um, to your own people. So I think this is very unfortunate and um, for me this doesn't look good, that doesn't look healthy. This is not the fault of the media, this is not the fault of the police, this is definitely the fault of political decisions made in Pristina, obviously. And so yes, uh, we are now here, we spent the whole day in the north, and tomorrow we have the opportunity to talk to some people in uh, Pristina and ask them what is the future uh, of that part of Kosovo when you need heavy protection to enter a municipal building. Well, I will not disclose everything what we have spoken about. I can only tell you that uh, I express my concern, I express my worries. I see that there is a, a big unity amongst all the international um, partners. I read the statement of Anthony Blinken. I saw that our special envoy Manuel Sarazin was out yesterday. I saw that many people become very active to stop this to happen, to find a peaceful solution. And I'm very disappointed that obviously there is no um, political will at this stage to change the situation. But it, wait a minute, as I said, it's not his fault. He is not responsible for the situation here. So I don't have to bother him, I don't have to blame him. I have to pe ask the people and the decision makers and Pristina. I, I still hope that nobody has a, s a severe interest in escalation. But if the idea is to escalate the situation, of course it needs a reaction from the West. And I do hope there will be a reaction because I think our task is to make sure that we will have stability in the region and that we all work together on an improvement of the social standards, improvement to bring this country forward and not to escalate and not to scare people. I mean, I see that citizens don't feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable to live around with heavy armed uh, vehicles and heavy armed policemen. You want to I think you can see it as an interim, as a technical mayor for some time, so like a temporary mandate, yes. But whether this has a full legitimization, even the elections were fair, yes, we know. But I would say a democratic um, uh, or fully democratic, fairly, um, uh, or fairly organized election would look different. But of course, we would have hoped, and I, I put this in a statement, that uh, Srpska Lista would participate and not to boycott. So I do regret that of course on the Serbian side there was no effort being taken to send candidates, to register uh, parties. I know there is a reason for that, but nevertheless it would have been much easier for all of us if this election uh, would have been used as an opportunity for the next step over, forward and not to boycott it. I mean, this is too early for me to judge, but if you have if you have indication that a criminal case is needed and the prosecution is needed, you take other measures than uh, you storm or you give protection to a mayor um, in the very civilian, um, I would say, uh, environment. So yes, if you think you need a uh, prosecution against individual criminals, of course, 
this is allowed to do, but you would not do this in the way uh, it is done in four uh, municipalities here in the north, I guess. So the a message people, in general, in well, I, I think this is not a solution. Uh, we can't enter the municipal uh, buildings uh, with force. We need a civilian solution, we need a peaceful solution, we need something sustainable, we need to reach out to people. These are as the same citizens as we have in other um, uh, municipalities in Kosovo. And uh, as you said, I mean, with one, two, three percent turnout, there is no democratic uh, legitimization and this needs to be understood. So we need, a, I would say, uh, a serious and an honestly taken dialogue from the sides in, in Pristina to the people here. Well, I do hope that they find a solution different than this one. This is not a solution. This is just people scaring off. I mean, as a civilian, as a citizen, I don't want to live under these conditions. So even as I said, de jure, yes, you can hold election with 1% turnout. But de facto, if you have a mayor who has no support from his own people, from his own voters, how are you going to survive? How are you going to work? This is unrealistic. This is not real. So I do hope that they work on a, on a different solution than this military solution. For me, this is very worrying. This will just increase the tension. This will not, uh, will not lead to anything. And so I hope they stop these temporary measures. I hope they stop this, um, this stupidity. Um, and I hope they find something else than just uh, threatening people, intimidating people, using force and come up uh, with something which is a trust-building measure.